Hello, welcome to the GDB Watchpoint. I'm Phil Nash, developer out of Goethe JetBrains, and I'm happy to have been invited to show you some tips and tricks for using GDB within C-Line, our C++ IDE. Now support for GDB, as well as LLDB, is fully integrated in C-Line. You may not even need to know that it's running under the hood. If you have a tool chain already installed, C-Line will most likely have picked that up when you installed it, and everything just works. If you do need to set it up or change it, you can do that in the settings, even adding additional tool chains if you want to switch between them. Now all the fundamentals you would expect, like setting breakpoints, stepping into or out of code, inspecting variables, they're all first class citizens of the IDE. But of course it's GDB or LLDB powering that behind the scenes. But if you're a GDB expert, you'll be pleased to know you still have full access to the GDB console at any time. Where debugging your C-Line really shines, though, is where it goes beyond the basics. For example, as well as the standard variable inspector pane that you would expect to find in any IDE, variable values are also shown in line alongside the source code, giving you a much more integrated experience that can help keep you in the flow. In other cases, some advanced or less well-known features of GDB are also exposed. For example, being able to evaluate a complex expression, even if it involves function calls. You can declare new variables, just scoped within the evaluation, and even change the state of the program, either directly or inside a function call. And these expressions can then be added as watches, so they can be re-evaluated on every step. You can also do more with breakpoints. IDE integration means that breakpoints are shown as red dots in the gutter, where we can toggle them on and off, although you can also do that with a shortcut. But if we right-click one, we get to see even more that we can do. We can disable a breakpoint, which is handy if we don't want to remove it completely, just stop it from doing anything for now. We can also get it to break conditionally, based on the evaluation of a single value or an expression. And then we can say whether execution should suspend. Now that might seem odd at first, why would you want to have a breakpoint if it doesn't actually, you know, break? Well, let's toggle that and find out. And that pops more things that it can do. We can get it to log things, just a message, stack trace, or the result of another expression evaluation. Useful if we want to see how specific state is changing without stopping the program from running. We can also get it to fire only once by setting remove once hit. Or the other way around, keep the breakpoint disabled until some other breakpoint is reached first. Now remember that breakpoints don't actually have to break or suspend, so you can set one just act as a dependency for another breakpoint later. That could be really useful if you have some code that's executed a lot, but you only want to debug it when it comes via a particular code path. And if we click here, we go to the general breakpoints dialog, where we can do even more. We can see all the breakpoints in the current project and click through to them. We can also set breakpoints when exceptions are thrown, or when they're caught. And if you have plugins in other languages, like JavaScript or Python here, you can set breakpoints for code in those languages too. Now there's one more type of breakpoint that C-Line supports, and this is perhaps the most appropriate for this series, and that's the watchpoint. A watchpoint is set on data rather than code. You can set the watchpoint to fire when a variable is read from, written to, or either. That's really useful if you don't know what line causes the problematic change, just that the data changes. Now while it's common to start your executable in the debugger, you can also attach it to an already running process. Again, CLine makes this easy, giving you an attach to process command, which shows you a list of running processes to choose from. Now this list can get quite long, so you can easily filter the list just by typing. Once attached, the debugger works just the same way as before. And the final thing we'll look at is debugging on a remote machine or a VM. There's a few ways to do remote development in C-Line, but for debugging purposes, it boils down to either connecting to GDB server on the remote machine, which involves a bit more manual setup and copying things around,
or in full remote mode, you build and deploy over SSH, and CLine will take care of syncing the source files. And by the way, this approach also works for Docker containers and many embedded toolchains. So that's been a whistle-stop tour of some of the less known debugging features in CLine, powered by GDB or LLDB. But there are many things we didn't look at. One of them is that CLine can also integrate with UndoDB via a plugin. So, hope you found something new to try out. Good luck debugging.